Here comes a new challenger! Hello there everyone, and this is sort of an early tier list of something that I've kind of wanted to talk about, and that is, of course, patch 12.0. We will be talking about all the change fighters alongside Kazuya. So, let's get started right away. Now, this tier list will only be focusing on just the change characters plus Kazuya. Kazuya is obviously an early prediction, but as for a full-on tier list, I'll be making that at a later date. So, probably around the time when maybe the final characters you know, soon to be revealed, because they're obviously going to make that a big announcement. So, let's get started right away, starting with Young Link. I always thought Young Link was a high-tier character, and the buffs didn't really change anything, right? So, there's not much to go over. I mean, Young Link, in my opinion, is the second best Link. I personally think that Adult Link, or just Link, is the best out of the three, with Toon Link uh, easily being the worst out of the three. Not to say that Toon Link doesn't have his good qualities either, but I would say that if you're going to go with anyone, I'd prefer Young or Adult Link if I were to choose, right? So, moving on, Marth. Marth, um, I tier as well, right? I think Marth, my main issue with Marth is that, of course, he his tippers change depending on what character he's fighting against, right? Like, yeah, sure, you could argue that if you do the same thing a hundred times, it will work on you know every time uh to me i find that a bold fat lie because i did no joke let me tell you guys a little story real quick with kazuya i was practicing electric wind god fist and you know what happened i was doing it against falcon and there's an idol that falcon does where he shifts back and he did that and it <laughs> dodged one of my moves all right so when they say if you do the same thing a hundred times they're lying to you otherwise marth's tippers is what they're improving and while i'm grateful for that i don't feel like he's gonna be skyrocketing to the top tier anytime soon do i think he's better than lucina well no i don't because for me i personally prefer consistency over what marth has that's not to say that marth doesn't have consistent tippers at times you know it really depends on what character he's fighting against but i'd rather have you know universal consistency right that's just me, but hey, you know, if you think Lucina's lame, I don't blame you, but it is what it is, right? Olimar, I don't think Olimar's a top tier anywhere near there. I think Olimar is, is still crazy good, but overall, he's not going anywhere, like higher in my opinion, because of how much they've nerfed him over time. I think Olimar, this change, again, nothing nothing different because all they did was they removed a sour spot frame and replaced it with a sweet spot frame it, like it, it's it's a nothing burger so whatever rosalina i heard the buzz likes it i always thought rosa was high tier i never thought this character was top tier by any means though i do feel you know this is just a prediction but i feel like attack canceling de definitely benefits rosalina and who knows maybe rosalina is actually pretty broken with attack canceling because then you can do a whole bunch of stuff that you can't really do with other characters in the roster right so maybe in that case rosalina is pretty good but we'll see so for the me's i'm just gonna put them where i think they are i think sword fighter sucks and gunner and brawler are extremely good okay wait sorry i messed up there you go right so let's go over each of them in terms of all of their buffs they basically only buffed up the special moves that don't get used a whole lot for gunner they kind of buffed you know the two up specials being the shoryuken right we'll just call it shoryuken and the other one being like a super high ver vertical one and those were really good changes in my opinion right because the vertical one it goes super high up and it's my favorite recovery to use uh and one of the best parts about it is now that it's faster it's harder to catch when gunner is off stage as for the sure you can one it has more invincibility which means that you're not going to beat it out and you will probably lose your stock because it's a very strong out of shield option as for sword fighter same a similar thing they basically just change things that you're really not going to use as sword fighter i mean the counter is nice but uh, it doesn't seem like you can do anything out of the counter even still i thought that like when they first described it i thought when they first described the counter 
you know me being optimistic i thought it was like a few frames less of lag so that if you were to counter weaker moves you can actually combo into it but that just doesn't seem to be the case it's just one frame <laughs> you know less lag so i mean what's the real big difference so in terms of limits they haven't changed at all right ryu i still think ryu is the best fighting game character outside of min min so yeah that's a hot take oh wait i just spoiled something whoops <laughs> well well we'll get to it when we get to it Bayonetta. I always thought this character was stupid. I hate, like, campy characters. Bane of my existence. The fact that people don't think camping is a good, like, ideology to have when playing Smash. Like, don't get me wrong, camping's lame. But you'd be surprised how many characters benefit from just being lame. I'm gonna make that a video. A how-to lame. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that's gonna be great. Anyways, Min Min, talk to you. The up smash nerf was, I mean, wasn't that much, right? It kills like 6% later or so, or like 10% later, whatever, right? And the rec the reflector and the move comes out frame 8 instead of frame 7, right? So it's nothing like a big deal. It's not really a big deal. There's nothing much to say about that. But the only big-ish change is her up B. It takes like, I think, 2 to 4 frames for her to grab the ledge now with her tether recovery. Which means that if you narrowly escaped, you know, edge guarding situations as Min Min before, you know, well then you're gonna get caught more often because that's kind of all Min Min has. I mean, she can sort of stall herself using a smash attack and her up B, like using the first up B to like <laughs> to stall, but that's that's about it. <laughs> you know, Min Min doesn't really have much when it comes to recovery. And well, between all the tether recoveries in the game, Byleth is easily the best one, so there you go right next we have steve they didn't really change much to steve other than just a glitch so we'll leave him in high tier nothing much to say pyramithra all right so pyra and mithra if we were to count them as separate characters i think pyra sucks all right i think pyra the main issue with pyra is that without mithra you can't really play the game as Pyra, you can, you can definitely gimmick people on, on Wi-Fi, but offline, you can react, and obviously it's much easier to whiff Punisher than it is Mithra. So the way I view Pyra Mithra is that Mithra is like, oh, I'm the neutral character, and I'm the character that's supposed to be played in disadvantage. Pyra, you use her to recover vertically, that's about it. And when you're in advantage state, also better at ledge trapping in my opinion, so because she has bigger and more longer lasting hitboxes than mithra does so they definitely have their quirks but like things for instance like neutral b pressure on shield is so fake because you can spot dodge last hit and punish pyro you can't really do that with mithra because mithra's lightning buster is obnoxious speaking of lightning buster they did buff it quote unquote because what it would do before is that every character would basically be counted as a hundred weight if used in the air or fully charged on the ground now it's actually calculating their weight which means that characters that are much lighter will die to it much earlier and considering that most of the good characters are below 100 then it's definitely going to get some more kills than it would well done before which is really good pretty good all right but there's nothing much else to say otherwise i mean she can't recover for free with her air dodge so i mean there you go right so mithra pyra they didn't change all too much personally right like whatever f smash having like less pushback while charging whatever right jab two making it connect better into jab three or rapid jab yeah, that's pretty good whatever right but of course the main one is kazuya the prediction and i think kazuya is gonna be high tier now the way i see kazuya right is that he's definitely like the footsies your know, whip punish your bane punish type of character right he 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 requires really good fundamentals for me you know, I, I like Kazuya. I like playing him, you know? But he's definitely one of those characters where it's like, he gets a hidden and you're dead. Like, you're done. That's it. GG, shake my hand. You you didn't shake my hand yet? Why, why didn't you? No, come on, shake my hand. That's basically what we Kazuya in a nutshell. If you're really good with Kazuya, when you get a hidden, then the opponent's set. But that's also if you get a hidden. I mean, yeah, Kazuya has some crazy movement on the ground, but I'm primarily talking about platform camping. He doesn't like platforms, and he really can't do much about it either. I mean, you could try, but of course, if you go for anything too risky, you're going to get punished for it. 
So when it comes to me, in my personal opinion, I think Kazuya is just really bad at anti-airing people. Of course, he does have things like up tilt, you know, electric wind god fist. Uh, obviously, his up air because his up air is four frames. But thing is, is that he has a six frame jump squat, which means he gets on the air in frame seven, which means that move is technically frame 11. You know what I mean? And it has obviously a leg intangibility, but for me, I just don't see Kazuya doing too well against platform camping, which is probably the most optimal way to deal with him, along with just not approaching him at all. Here's a little key tip, by the way. Against Ryu, Ken, Terry, and even Kazuya, it's probably best to avoid getting in, right? I mean, I would say Ryu, out of all of them, can force approaches, and that's it. Like, I feel like Ryu can force approaches. Kazuya's laser offline is very reactable and also very linear, and of course, if you throw it out, you're gonna get punished for it, so yeah. When it comes to Kazuya, he is very much a, you know, a very high execution character. He has a lot to him, he's very cool, he's very fun, and he can definitely help you out in terms of fundamentals if you're ever struggling with spacing or micro spacing, etc. I definitely suggest Kazuya for that. Even if you don't plan on maining the character, you can definitely learn a lot from playing Kazuya, and it can definitely help you improve your own play styles with the characters that you use, right? So I think Kazuya is great for that in that sense. But as Kazuya as a character, he, I just don't see him being all too strong. I still think that Ryu and potentially Terry are better. I don't know about Ken because of haha <laughs> SDI. But what I will say is that I think Kazuya is a very strong character. And like I said, he's definitely a one touch character. Like, yeah, like think of Ganon, right? If Ganon puts you in like the worst position possible, he's taking your stock guaranteed, right? Kazuya is basically that, but better. He can recover, unlike Ganon, and he has a lot more crazy setups. And of course, there's Electric Queen Godfist, which if you get hit by it, well, GG, GG, good luck. I mean, you did your best. Haha, <laughs> shake my hand. Uh, yeah, that's the character in a nutshell. Don't get hit, but you will get hit because that's just how Kazuya be doing. But anyways, those are my opinions. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. It's been like, what, two weeks? So I thought it was appropriate to do this. Obviously, when it comes to Ultimate, they don't make any big changes, which is unfortunate because I would have loved if they do a patch where they just go over every character, right? Like every single one, or at least a majority of the characters. I know that's a lot, but like they did more in Smash 4, so why can't they do more here? That's just my opinion. Then, you know, with all that being said, subscribe because I like making these videos for you guys and I do enjoy making these chill lists and just discussing, right? I also do read your comments. Of course, I do love reading my my comments. So, yeah, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, Sab, what about Banjo? I forgot about Banjo and Kazooie. <laughs> But they were changed also and just as before I think Banjo outside of like bear sending at a better angle uh, Not much to say really But Banjo's cool Banjo's high tier. Honestly, there's no real bad DLC Except Piranha Plant. Piranha Plant is the only bad one like all the other DLC Are really good Joker, but just to go over it real quickly Joker top tier hero high tier Banjo high tier in my opinion. You just need high execution. Terry high tier. Byleth high tier. Min Min top tier. Steve high tier. Sephiroth top tier. Pyramithra easily top tier. Alright, Kazia high tier. Though of course with the right player you can really make this character look top tier. <laughs> I mean, not surprising. But still, I hope you guys enjoyed like I said. Please stick around because I always like making this sort of content. And with that all being said, please take care of yourselves, be safe, and enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.